What's up you guys? Today we're in Seattle, Washington. As some of you know, I love true crime, and there's no one more infamous when it comes to crime than Ted Bundy. So today we're gonna be following in his footsteps, and we're gonna go see some of the locations where he committed the most heinous crimes known to man. So let's get started, come on. So the first location we're gonna be visiting is the house that Ted Bundy was actually living in when he began his crime spree. So check this out. And this was actually the exact room that he was in, this corner room right here. That's pretty crazy knowing the fact that Ted Bundy was walking this alleyway. So creepy. And there's actually people who are living in there today, so we're not going to disturb anyone or go knock on any doors. But the fact that this is where it all started is absolutely unreal. It's located in the University District. So, so it's heavily populated with foot traffic. People are constantly walking down here just to show how, almost how easy it was for him to get new victims just because of how populated it was. We're gonna quickly go to the front of the house just so we can see it, but clearly he was in that back west wing window, but I'll show you guys the front of the house just so you could see. But here it is. He would probably walk in through this gate right here, go up in there, and that's the house. I went here for my first year of school, and it's so creepy like living in this area. Did they ever talk and about it in the school? No, not. They never like brought it up. So the first victim's house that we're gonna go visit is Karen Sparks. She actually survived an attack by Ted Bundy. And I wanna show you guys just how close she lived to where he lived. Check this out, literally four minute drive away. We're here right now, and this is the coordinates of Karen Sparks' house. So this is what Karen Sparks' house looked like. I think they only built up apartment buildings here now, so they might have tore down this place because the address that matches this address doesn't look like this place anymore. This is the address now, Westwood Apartment Complex. So I don't think it no longer exists. I did look up exactly what happened to Karen Sparks and I wanna read it to you guys because it's quite interesting and quite disgusting. So if you're squeamish, maybe clog your ears. This happened in January of 1974. She was asleep in her basement bedroom. Uh, she was a UW student and uh, she was awoken by Bundy viciously beating her with a metal pole that came off of her bed frame and uh, her housemates actually found her the next morning, alive still, but with that same pole shoved up her hoo-ha. And um, incredibly, she survived and all, but she had like life-changing injuries that she had to survive with, like brain damage and uh, you know internal organs were messed up. Luckily, she survived to tell her story, and this is her today. And um, one of the only that survived. But damn, this was just the beginning of his heinous crimes. So let's hit the next one and um, hopefully the building is still there. The second victim on his list was Linda Ann Healy. And this is how close Linda lives from the last person. Five minute drive, that's how close everything is to each other. Been within a five minute radius of one another. That's just crazy knowing that he was walking up and down these streets, picking and choosing his next victim. So this is into the more like residential part of the university district. They're kind of further away from the restaurants and shops. Right, as you can see, there's a lot more like housing, townhomes. Make a left on this street right here. Oh here my God, there's someone's missing wheelchair. So it's about halfway up the street. Here it is, you guys. This is where it happened. Very covered up with trees, so it's hard to see, but this is the house. So one of the craziest things about this particular victim was that she, was out drinking with her friends that night and uh, they ended up coming home early and they thought nothing of it, you know, they went to sleep. Her roommate was literally in the other room while this happened and at some point in the middle of the night, because she was supposed to be up at 5.30 in the morning for work, at some point between like midnight and 5.30 a.m. she was kidnapped. And when her roommates woke up, they went and looked at her room and she was gone, but her bed was nicely made, which she never normally makes her bed in the morning when she has to get up for work. This time it was, but then her roommates just thought she went to work and they didn't really think anything of it. But it wasn't until the boss called later that day saying, hey, why didn't my most reliable employee show up to work today? And that's when they started checking out her bed where they found blood on her sheets and they knew immediately that something was wrong. So check this out, I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a door right there and there's also a little window right next to it. And that was actually the entry point of Ted Bundy. He actually came here earlier in the day, saw the door was unlocked, and decided to come back later that night so that he could sneak in while everyone was asleep. You know what's even crazier about this? 
is she went missing and they didn't know where any of her remains went. They couldn't find her, anything. She was just missing for about a year until literally a year later, some forestry students found some human remains about an hour away from here on Taylor Mountain. And those remains consisted of four women's bones, one of them being Linda Ann Healy's. But anyways, let's keep going. Let's keep following his footsteps and see more of this crazy man's axe. Come on. There were four other victims after Linda Ann Healy, but they all occurred in parts of Washington that are a little far and even as far as Oregon. So we are going to go to his seventh victim, George Ann Hawkins, who was a UW student, right? Mm -hmm. So that's in the area. We're going to go check it out. Let's go. So this is the alleyway that George Ann Hawkins was walking down when she was abducted by Ted Bundy. And this is the fraternity that she was leaving. This is where her boyfriend actually lived. This is the Beta House. And see, it's a couple hundred feet walk to the Theta House, which is where she lived. That was the sorority she was in. And I'm pretty sure, I'm not positive, but do you see that bridge? Yeah, the, the one that the guy's painting right there? Yeah, the one that the guy's painting there. Um, I'm pretty sure after the abduction, the main house built that bridge to their back house for safety purposes. Right, because before that, people could just be, anyone could literally walk these streets and come down this alleyway. So now, so now, that gave it a little extra protection from one building to the next. Well, yeah, now the girls can walk from the main house to the back house without walking through the alleyway. Wow. So that's where she was walking from, but she was actually abducted in a parking lot 500 feet away from here, where Ted Bundy coerced her with crutches. He kept dropping his briefcase, so she went and helped him take it to his car. What's actually crazy about this whole situation is once he got to the the dump spot where he dumped her body, he realized that she only had one shoe on and no earrings. So he started to freak out thinking like, oh my God, I'm gonna get caught. So he had to come back the next day. And since the police were only checking out this alleyway that we're in right now, they didn't go over to the parking lot. So he was able to retrieve her shoes and her earrings without anyone catching him. So the aerial photograph that we have showing where this parking lot is, as you can see on the screen, it's from 1977. So a lot of things have changed. And with the way we are mapping this out, we believe that the parking lot had to have been right here where this building is. So they must have built a building on top of it at some point within the last 10, 15, 20 years. This is where we think the lot is, but it might be a little up. It could have happened right here. Yeah, this is where it happened. Oh, yep, this is the picture that's on the thing. This is it. So here it is. This is the lot where she was kidnapped. We found the lot. It's literally right behind me. This is where it happened. This is where George Ann was abducted. And I want to show you guys just the distance from where that bridge was created and where the alleyway actually happened where she first um, encountered Ted Bundy. As you can see, that bridge right there and where that car is coming, that is where it all happened. So they got this far away, probably about quarter of a mile away, all the way to here where she was smacked over the head, shoved inside of his VW bug and where the beginning of the end of her life. All right, for the next part of our tour, we have this here bridge. I know it might not look like much to you right now by seeing it behind me, but it will in a second when I show you this here photo. So right behind me where this truck is, is where Ted Bundy was photographed in front of his signature tan bug. The same bug he used to abduct many of his victims. He had just left his 12th Avenue apartment, which I showed you guys earlier in the video, and he was about to head out to Salt Lake City, Utah to study law at the University of Utah and to continue his killing spree. Ted Bundy was probably here holding his girlfriend at the same moment that I'm holding my girlfriend right here. That seems messed up. Man. It does seem messed up. But like, think about it, like she didn't even know what he was at the time. She just thought he was just a nice guy. Little did she know, he was sneaking out and killing other girls. Creepy. It is quite peaceful here though, I will say. We've left Seattle and are now in Issaquah at Lake Sammamish State Park. He's digging for the remains of Ted Bundy's victims. This is Lake Sammamish right here. This is actually where Ted abducted two women 
Janice Ott and Denise Nasland. He did it in a way that was exactly the same from one to the other, and he did it three and a half hours apart. Basically what he would do is he would go up to these women and using a sling on his arm and acted like he was hurt, and he would ask them if they would help him unload his sailboat. But that sailboat wasn't even with him. It was at his parents' house down the road. So he got these girls to get into his car where he later took them to an Issaquah dump site, which we're gonna take you to next so you guys can see where their remains were actually found. And it said that the cause of death was actually blunt trauma to the head and it was most likely a crowbar. Like, I just don't think girls would be hopping into cars nowadays, especially to help unload a sailboat, but it's said that it happened right by the restrooms. I don't know if these are the same said restrooms, but so let's make our way down to the beachside lake so you guys can see where these people were hanging out and uh, enjoying their day before they met Mr. Ted Bundy. Right now we're at the Issaquah dump site. It's way more developed than it was in the 70s and now they go by the Issaquah Highlands. But if you check out behind me this wooded area, this is where two of the body's remains were found in this wooded patch area. Ted Bundy himself has admitted that George Ann Hawkins remains are here as well, yet because of the lack of DNA research that they had back in the day, they were never able to identify her remains. So still today, 50 years later, she's just known as a missing person. Ted Bundy went on to commit even more crimes across different states, which later led to his arrest, and he was sentenced to the death penalty on January 24th, 1989. If you guys are enjoying this type of content and you want more like this, please let me know in the comments down below. You guys are in control of what I post. If you want to support the channel, please pick up some merch, brennantaylor.com. We have a lot of awesome stuff. Just check it out. It really does help the channel and allows us to make these videos. So if you like something, pick it up, brennantaylor.com. I love y'all, and I'll see you when I see you. Peace. I don't